We'd like to welcome now Dr. Marvin Beeman, who is the Emeritus Partner in the Littleton Equine Medical Center. Thanks so much for being with us today. It's my pleasure. Let's go back uh, from a very early age, Doctor. You were active in the equestrian world. What first got you interested as a child, and then what kept you interested all these years? I was raised on a Highland ranch. My dad went to work there in 1929, was going to stay two weeks, and left 56 years later. Wow. And so my father ran the horse part of Highlands Ranch for Mr. Phipps, Elsie Phipps Jr. Sure. And so I was around horses all my life and we had a marvelous veterinarian that came from Denver, by the way, out to work on my dad's horses. And he was such a nice guy and he always came to work with a necktie on and a white shirt. And at age seven, I decided I wanted to be a veterinarian. I wanted to be an equine practitioner and so that whole environment is what kept me interested in doing what I'm doing. So the love of horses at a very early age, you yep. knew right away what yep. you wanted to yep. do. That's rare for a seven-year-old, <laughs> but and, and you've done it all your life. Yeah. Well, it, you're a Colorado native, which we have just established, uh, born and educated here. What influenced you to become a large animal veterinarian? How did you start the practice? Well, I wanted to be an equine practitioner from the word go. So right. I, I went to college to, with that in mind. and. Then the people that we met through the horses kept my interest going, and so I never varied from that. In fact, one of my classmates at our 50-year reunion in veterinary college said, there's one guy in here that knows what he knew what he wanted to do the day he walked in here and still doing it. Sure, and you're still doing it. How wonderful for you that you're able to, oh, it's uh, an absolute to do that privilege. and make it a, a, a life's work. Yeah. And I would imagine that veterinary medicine has certainly changed over the years. Oh. It's a marvelous, to, uh, we just finished our, our meeting on, online, of course, with the American Association of Equine Practitioners, right. and to see what has happened in that environment of that, it, which kind of defines what's happened, it's absolutely amazing. I, the first meeting I went to was in 1957, and I only missed one when my daughter was born. Wow. And you sit there and you listen to the things that are going on. We, we, had, we didn't have general anesthesia, right. we, inhalation anesthesia. And we've gone through that and I listened to a program last night about that and what, what's happening. And the really neat thing about the inhalation anesthesia, to use that point, that is what has saved a lot of horses' lives. That those horses, before we had inhalation anesthesia, those horses died. Well, and it would seem to me, you know, you see a lot of vets and you think of cats and dogs and, you know, they're little and you put them up on the counter and that sort of thing. But a large animal has got to seem to me like a huge responsibility, pardon the pun here. But so large animal veterinarian has got to be a, a really a choice for you. Well, it is. Uh, and it's so fascinating. And horses in particular, I think they're one of the most magnificent biological machines God ever made. People will argue the point, well, they can't run as fast as a cheetah or jump as high as an antelope, but nobody rides them. That's right, <laughs> right. And don't they have sort of a symbiotic relationship with human beings too? Oh, you? absolutely. They, they have a mentality that makes them want to do or will do, not necessarily want to, will do what man asks them to do. And had there been a better machine before mechanizations, the countries that ruled the world would have used them, but they, the machine, or they used something other than horses, but they all used horses. Right, it's not something. Now you've been coming to, or been involved with, uh, the stock show for more than 50 years. What keeps, keeps you coming back? Well, I've got to say a little background. Sure. I came to the talk show when I was six years old. Mr. Phipps had a box in the old arena, sure. and my my mother and dad were invited to come and I started coming here when I was six. And then that environment just kept me interested and as I graduated from college there was a county agent from Castle Rock that was involved also. His name was Mr. Charlie Kirk and he asked me to do some things here and I stepped up because I was extremely interested in it and that's, that's how I got started. My first official job here was in 1958. Wow. And I've had something to do here ever since. Good for you. <laughs> well, you loved it so much that you looked for the opportunity, took them, and were able to you know, continue with what you love. And what better way could it yeah. be to get it done than that? Yeah. yeah. 
Now, you're a director emeritus, member of the Western Stock Show Association's Board of Directors. With all the changes taking place, there's a real transformation, as we all know, going out at the stock show facilities and programs. How do you feel about the future of the National Western? Well, I'm extremely excited about what's happening to see the evolution of the various stages. When I first started here as, as a veterinarian for the horse department, the horses were stabled in Quonset huts, huts around here. Wow. <laughs> I think of, I, drove, I thought about that today when I drove in. Sure. Uh, we'd go from little Quonset hut to the other to do something to the horses and then to see what's evolved now, what we have now was a huge improvement and then what we're going to have is just going to be absolutely amazing. So something for everybody to look forward to. Yeah, right? it sure is. Yeah. And I also understand you are, as you might expect, an avid horseman. You do it all from participating in the Rappo Hunt Club to playing polo to being a member of the Roundup Riders. Certainly a variety of talents there. How did all of that activity sort of come about and how you love it so much? Well, it came about because of my father and mother uh, working at Highlands Ranch, actually at the Hunt Club part of it, that's the south end of Highlands Ranch, where the law enforcement center is. Oh, sure. That's, that, Absolutely. That, I, did you ever go there in the, the little stone building? Yes. That, that's where I grew up in that little stone oh, building. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. So you ask me how I got involved with the horses. <laughs> I got put on a horse at a real young age and either I stayed home or I went. So, so and then Mr. Phipps was wonderful. He, he his his son was six years younger than me and so he taught us both to hunt and taught us both to play polo and it just evolved and then and so that's what got me involved good for you keep doing it all the theme of this video by the way uh that this interview will be a part of is called stock show icons and really others who i've said this is an icon video they said well i'm not an icon nobody wants to take the, you know, claim that they are an icon, but grant me license here and say that, yes, you are an icon, a personification of the National Western Stock Show. How do you feel about being an icon? Well, Al Purcell says you are what your record shows it to be. Wow. And when I was asked to do something, I never came up and said I wanted a job. I, when I was asked to do something, I was going to do it to the best of my ability. And further and furthering the advancement of the health and welfare of the horse. And as a result of the National Western being so involved, that's why I started and my practice has been involved here as a veterinarian ever since I started in 57. Right. Do you think the general public underestimates the horse? Oh, there's no question in today's world. There's no question they underestimate the horse. However, the horse has become a really substance for young people. Right. And it's, that's been one of the pleasures of my practice is to watch a youngster start out, and now I've seen them have families, and now I've seen their, their children. And, that, and I think about that media for a horse, and what it does for families, it provides a medium by which those children realize there's other responsibilities in life besides theirs. Wow. And feeding that horse and doing whatever they do with that horse, it's, it's, it's just been a wonderful experience. Right. It is a commitment with a large animal like That's right. that too, isn't it? It is something you really have to do. Yeah. It's not, you know, a dog and a bone type of thing. That's right. Okay. Yeah, a big commitment. With all the work and the contributions that you've done to the National Western Stock Show, Dr. Beeman, what would you say you're most proud of? The event center, probably. Uh, the event center, I was involved with the planning of that and involved with it. And one day Pat Grant came to me and he says, how big should we build this indoor arena? I said, well, I don't know, but I know a fellow that I think that does. His name was Don Bird. He's a past president of the American Quarter Horse Association and a really good friend of mine. And I called him and he says, you make it 150 feet by 300 feet and you can do so many things. You can always make it smaller, but you can never make it bigger. Good point. And uh, I've never forgotten, I came to a meeting and Pat says, how big are we going to make this arena? And I said that, and he said, that's what we're going to do. And that's, that, that arena's 
That's somebody said, somebody said, well, it's big enough to put a 727 airplane. And I said, I said, it doesn't make any difference. It, what, what do you want to do with it? Right. We can, we can play polo. We can rope. We can have a beautiful Grand Prix arena, and we, we don't have to have it small. But how nice that that's the size you needed and that's the size you got. That yeah. really makes a difference. Yeah. Yeah. And that thing will never grow old now because of that and really become quite a crown jewel in the centerpiece of all this yeah. new stock yeah. show. Well, I hope with the new buildings they right. get, well, they, we've already established that, so. Good for you, that's terrific. Now, you know, in this strange time that we're in, uh, there is no Stock Show 2021. Uh, and of course, we're disappointed in that. We're doing virtual events and we're just having something in that place for those 16 days in January. But let me ask you, can you hardly wait till the Stock Show returns in 2022? <laughs> okay. What are you most looking forward to? <laughs> well, I, I'm looking f most forward to the horse activity and and because that's where I focus on. But having been here as long as I have, I realized how important every drop in the pool is. And every drop in the pool, the ripple go affects everybody. And I, I've, I've marveled at how people here have been able to manage where those ripples go and don't adversely affect them. I shouldn't say don't, but we try really hard to have it not affect them. Yeah, it turns out there's been a pretty good team put in place for all this new stuff that's coming our yeah, way. Yeah, there sure has. Yeah. Well, uh, Dr. Marvin Beeman, a delight being with you. Emeritus partner at Littleton Equine Medical Center. Thank you so much for being with us, and thank you for all your contributions. Well, thank you. It's my pleasure.